Thanks so much for having me here today. So as residents of California, we all know what it's like to live in a drought. We've been in a state of severe to exceptional drought for the last three years. That's been at a cost of $2.2 billion to our agricultural industry and an estimated 17,000 jobs. Now imagine a similar situation where instead of 17,000 people losing their jobs during a drought, 20 million people are at risk of not having enough food to eat. That's the case in the African Sahel, which is a region that stretches from Senegal in the west all the way to Eritrea in the east. Now the majority of the farming that happens in this region is subsistence agriculture, or the people relying on rainfall in order to produce enough food for their families to eat. Now, <clears throat> this is Alaji Besson. He's plowing his field of peanuts, and he's waiting for those rains to come. It's the early part of the season, and if those rains don't come, his crops don't grow. And if those crops don't grow, his family doesn't have enough food. And there's millions more just like him throughout this region. So I'm working with a team of interdisciplinary researchers, both from the US and from Africa, to address this problem. By studying a system where shrubs that grow throughout the region are grown in association with food crops. And our research has confirmed that this system can increase crop yields by two to five fold. Now imagine that, that's five times as much grain from the same plot of land. Now these differences are particularly stark in a time of drought. So this is when some plants are dying because of lack of water, but the plants planted near these shrubs are able to survive. Now, how does it work? Why would that happen? There's two things competing for the same resources. Well, we hypothesize that what's happening is actually something called hydraulic lift, or water moving up from the deep soil layers into the upper soil layers through the shrub roots where it can then be used by the crop. So in order to test this hypothesis, I set up an experiment where I injected a chemical tracer, specifically an isotope tracer, into the deep shrub roots at about a meter, a meter depth, so about up to here. And I tried to follow that tracer up through the shrub and into the crop. And you know what? We found the water in the crop, hence drinking from the same straw. Now, this is just one of the ways that this intercropping system helps to increase production in the Sahel. And our research is continuing uh, to study the total effects of the system and how it can impact the Sahel hunger crisis. Thank you for your time.